guys. Today we are going to be doing a best and worst purchases from 2022. And we are just talking about uh, like luxury handbags and some clothing and some shoes. And so I made a list. We're not going to be talking about all this stuff, but I made a list of all of the things that I purchased in like the luxury arena last year. And there were 35 things. So again, we're not going to be talking about all these things. A lot of these things were purchased kind of towards the end of the year. And so I'll touch upon those things. Um, but some of the things I'm not going to talk about at all because I either haven't worn them yet or I haven't gotten a good chance to bond with them and give you some um, productive feedback. So we are going to start here in my closet. We're going to be moving around the house because some of these things are in my other room. Some things are downstairs, but we're going to start here in my closet and we're going to start with some shoes. Yes, let's do that. So the first purchase I want to share with you that is definitely one of the best purchases of 2022 are these Prada Crystal Mules. I purchased these at Neiman Marcus and I wore them nonstop. Pretty much anytime I had to go out or wanted to wear like a fancy shoe, I threw these on. I love the heel height. They are probably like two and a half inches really easy to walk in, super duper comfortable. I have a wide foot and they fit fine in this band. And interestingly enough, these are a size seven and a half and I am usually either an eight and a half or a nine or 38 and a half or 39. And these are 37 and a half. So definitely when it comes to Prada, I do feel like, at least this is what I've noticed, I do feel like their shoes run a little large. So I would size down if you're ever buying these shoes online, maybe I would size down. And these are fantastic. Like I said, I wore them a lot. I love them. They have just enough sparkle in there to kind of jazz up any outfit. As you guys know, I have a lot of just plain black dresses, button front, pull over my head or whatever. And you throw this on with a nice handbag and you're like ready for a night out. So this was definitely a best and also most worn purchase of 2022. So both of these Chanel dad sandals were purchased uh, last year. These came after I had already purchased these and I had already purchased a pair of white ones that I, I think I got those at the end of 2021. They were part of the cruise collection. And so I got them either in like November or December. Anyway, when these came out, I was so excited. They are um, shearling lined, they are calf hair, and I just love them. I mean, I love the dad sandal. I hope they never go out of style. They probably will soon. I hope they never go out of style, but I just, they're really, really comfortable, and I feel like I can throw them on with pants. I can throw them on with jeans. I can dress them up a little bit. They're generally pretty casual, and here in Vegas, I can wear sandals probably 12 months out of the year. So these definitely one of the best purchases. I have worn these quite a bit, probably not as much as these or my white ones because these are furry. <laughs> uh, but these black ones came in. And like I said, I already had two pairs of the dad sandals and I was like, oh my God, do I need another pair of these dad sandals? But you know, just the straight up black caviar leather, I was like, yes. Yes, I just, let me just add these to the collection and I kind of made uh, a promise to myself to really cut back on like the dad sandal purchasing because yeah, there's, there's actually a few. So these definitely, I don't regret purchasing. I love them, I wore them a lot. And like I said, I feel like especially these black ones, I can wear with a dress, I can wear with pants, with jeans, like really, really easy to wear. And um, I don't think these will bring you into like an evening event <laughs> per se, but I don't feel like such a schlub <laughs> when I wear these. So those are definite winners. I'm actually looking at my list. I think I bought the Chanel Cruise dad sandals during 2022 as well. So these are the ones that I've been talking about. So it's the same style, same exact style, but there is this really interesting grain on this white leather. Hope you guys can see that. And then the CCs are like in this black and then there's a stitching. So before I got the black sandals, I just wore these white sandals with any sort of outfit that I could wear the black ones with. And these I think just are a little bit, they have like a little bit more of a sense of humor than the other two pairs. And I just really liked how these were white and they just sort of brightened up any sort of outfit. I wore these a lot. You can actually see like how dirty the insides are actually. You can see how much I wore these sandals and 
yeah, I just, I love the dad sandal. I really, really like the style. I like how comfortable they are. And like I said, I like how they um, kind of dress up a look, but not to the point where it's like too dressy. Like they're just like, they just add like a little pop of something. And the size in these, so these run large as well. So I have 38 in all three uh, different uh, colorways. And yeah, Chanel is all over the place. I feel like I have a pair of Chanel boots that are like 40s. I may even have other shoes that are like 41s. They're really all over the place. So definitely shoes that you want to try on in person. Um, another pair of shoes that were a huge winner are these Jimmy Choo Bing, I believe they're 65s. I think these are like the same height as my Prada ones. Yeah, this is such a good height for me. <laughs> this is such a good height for me. These, I f yeah, I think they're like a two and a half inch heel, maybe two and a half, maybe three. I don't think they're three. I think they're like a two and a half inch heel. Um, but these in the black patent leather with this uh, beautiful crystal detailing across the front, these are such an elegant shoe. And I purchased these when I was going to a black tie event and they were perfect, absolutely perfect. Super comfortable to wear because they're not really high. They just slide right on and I wore them all night and I did not have any foot pain and I've worn them a lot since I purchased these. So yeah, these are definitely a winner as well. Okay, some shoes that I bought that I, I don't wanna say are total losers. Well, this one maybe is kind of a total loser. I love them. I love the way they look, but they are so uncomfortable. So these are the Bottega Veneta pumps and they have this really long, toe area it's squared off the heel height again is very manageable i want to these are a little higher than yeah than the pradas and the jimmy Choo's. so i would say these are probably like a solid like three inch heel um, but very manageable they're not like crazy stiletto height um what is so uncomfortable i'm sure you guys can guess is the elastic in the back and i thought for sure that they would loosen up that i would get used to them it just, they just won't loosen up. And I think it's because there is this like leather piece running up the back, which is a really beautiful detail, but it keeps, it runs over the elastic. And so it keeps the elastic from actually loosening up a little bit. And it really adds a lot to the back of um, the elastic here. And it hits right into your Achilles heel. So, I've tried a number of things. Like when I wear these with stockings, uh, tights, anything like that, much better than barefoot. I even purchased, I'm not sure where it is. I even purchased this spray that acts as uh, kind of like this plastic layer. So you spray it like on your foot or whatever, any area where you feel like you're gonna blister or you blister often. And it's supposed to help with like the pressure and the wear and tear. So when I use that product, it helped with the rubbing. However, these just add like a lot of pressure <laughs> into your Achilles heel. And so they're just really uncomfortable. But because I love, 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 and they have this detail, but because I love the style of these shoes, I, I really do think that they look really, really cool on. I will wear them only if I know I'm just getting out of the car, straight to the restaurant, back in the car, I'm valet parking, like the whole thing. Like I really cannot walk that far in these and the first time i got these so i got these for an event not a black tie event but for kind of a fancy event it was like a fundraising event so it was the first time i was wearing these and i thought for sure and i had tights on i thought for sure it'd be fine by the like middle of that event and i was sitting for a lot of the time but i had to like walk to it oh my god i was like it felt like my feet were going to be severed right where this was hitting <laughs> the back of my heels so not that comfortable and again i was really hoping that i was going to eventually break them in the more i wore them and i have worn them and i've really tried because the rest of the shoe is really comfortable but that one part was really kind of a deal breaker um the other pair of shoes that i got that i don't wear often but i love because they're so beautiful and they're actually more comfortable than those bottegas because these i can actually stand these are the amina muadi crystal pumps i'm not sure actually what they call these but I just fell in love with this uh, kind of peachy nude rubber, <laughs> rubber material. It's so cool. And the slingback is kind of stretchy and, um, you know, they're not as far as heels go. 
they're not an uncomfortable shoe. It's just that they are really high for me. I used to be able to wear heels like this all the time, but I haven't in a long time. I don't know, I don't feel like hurting my back or like twisting my ankle anymore. Like I'm just getting too old for it. So I don't wear these too often because they are relatively high. I think these are 90, 95. Anyway, they're pretty high for me. And so, you know, if I had to choose between <laughs> these or these, I would wear these because this is just, yeah, this will cripple you. Um, yeah, these are just kind of uncomfortable. They're a little bit narrow in the toe box here and I have wide feet, but they're really beautiful and I can walk around a bit in these, but I haven't really reached for these. I have found if there's an occasion where I would wear these shoes, I tend to reach for the Jimmy Choo's because these are just so much more comfortable. I'm thinking about getting these in different colors, but I just, I don't know. I don't go to fancy events enough. I'm just so impressed with how comfortable those are. Anyway, these are beautiful. I love them. I just don't wear them that much. Oh, these actually weren't on my list. I almost forgot about these, but I got these on sale at Net-A-Porter and they're by this brand Neos, which I had never heard of, but I really, really love this shoe. Again, really comfortable height, comfortable sling back. Um, this material, I wouldn't say is, um, it's not stretchy but it's very, very soft. It's like this mesh material, and this is like a velvet overlay. It's just super duper cool. So these are a big thumbs up. These are another great pair that I feel like I can wear during the day and it'll carry me into evening really nicely. Like they're not super fancy like the Jimmy Choo Bings. Um, they're not super casual <laughs> like the dad sandals. These are really nice. I think you know, when I had a corporate job in New York, these would have been perfect because you can wear them to work. And then if you're going out for drinks afterwards, these like translate perfectly. So anyway, I really like these and I love the like velvet zebra print, just super cool. Okay, in terms of clothing, I actually just have a couple things that I wanted to share with you, some thoughts now that I've had these pieces for a while. So the first one I wanted to mention is this Dries Van Noten short sleeve sweatshirt. I purchased this at Saks in person, so I kind of just fell in love with it. You know, it's black and white, which I love. And then the black pattern on here, I just thought was really cool. It felt like maybe it was watercolor. It felt like maybe it was like photocopied, but was blurry. Are these flowers? Are these weeds? Is it just like an ink drawing? Anyway, I just really fell in love with it. But I just wasn't sure, you know, was I gonna be wearing a short sleeve pattern sweatshirt a lot? And the answer is yes. In fact, a short sleeve sweatshirt is perfect for the Las Vegas weather where it's cooler in the mornings and at night and it gets really warm during the day. This was absolutely perfect. And if they had this in any other sort of like neutral color scheme, I would totally get it. And I'm hoping Dries will come back out with this silhouette uh, in this material with like some other prints because he does really incredible prints. So this was a huge, huge winner for me. Another huge winner for me, it is a camouflage parka. And I purchased this when I went to the Dior outlet at Woodbury Commons, which is outside of New York City. So I went there, I wanna say in August when I was staying in New York. And this was at the outlets. And I remember this camouflage print, I think from a few years back and I just fell in love with it. This is not a typical piece of outerwear that you would find in Las Vegas because it kind of looks like rain gear. I wouldn't wear something this nice in rain, but that's the feeling it has. That's sort of the style um, that it has. So the camouflage, they're almost like an exposed seam where it's like frayed at the edge. And then all of these pieces are actually different. Like the green, I think you can see there, the green is different. So these are actually all pieced together. It is incredible, incredible craftsmanship. And I have been wearing this like nonstop. It is really, really perfect for the Vegas weather because it's just that one extra layer that you may need. Like if you stay out when the sun goes down or something, it's, it's been great. I brought this when I went to Palm Springs over New Year's. I've traveled with this. It travels very easily. I can just kind of fold it up and throw it into my um, luggage and it doesn't wrinkle. It's just fantastic. And I'm just so glad that I got this. It really has become like a staple in my wardrobe. And then the last bit of clothing I wanted to show you guys is this, um, I think they call it like a Dalmatian spot uh, jacket. And this is from Dries Van Noten. And I purchased this at the same time that I purchased this short sleeve sweatshirt. I purchased it at Saks when I was there in New York. And I just 
fell in love with this material. I love this kind of like crinkly nylon. I love this hot pink and black. I just thought it was so cool. And I'm gonna model it for you. And I have worn it out. It just buttons up. It just is a really cool like car coat kind of silhouette. It's probably a little bit longer than a typical car coat. It does go down to like mid calf for me. And I love this coat but it's warm. It's really, really warm. It's a lot warmer than I thought it was going to be. And so I've only worn it twice since I got it. And I'm just bummed about that because I just, I love it so much. And I just think it's so cool, but it's too warm to wear in Vegas. It's surprisingly, I mean, it's not even like filled necessarily. There's a little bit of puffiness in there and it is fully lined and I can feel that there's a little bit of puffiness going on. So I'm not sure if it's uh, lined in something um, almost like a quilt batting. Um, it's definitely not like filled. It's like not down filled or anything like that. But it's just a lot warmer than I thought it was going to be. And there just really hasn't been the occasion to wear it in Vegas. And I think it's not warm enough to wear in the winter time, like in New York. So I love this, but I just, yeah, I just haven't been able to wear it as much as I would like. So before we move on from the closet and talk about handbags, there are a couple of jewelry pieces I wanted to mention. One is these pair of Fendi hoops that I picked up, I wanna say last September, maybe? Last August or September. And I put them away in this box that they came in and I clear forgot about them. And so I don't know if that means anything because I've taken them out and I've worn them a lot more and I like them. I really like them. I just don't know that I love them. You know what I mean? There's something very basic about them, which I enjoy. I'm like, oh great. And that's kind of what uh, appealed to me when I purchased them. Um, but they're almost like too basic and they're actually like a touch too heavy. I don't know if you can see how it's kind of dragging my ear hole down. So I don't wear these that often because I don't like when earrings like kind of pull down, they're heavy enough to pull down. And I also feel like I like my other hoops more, like these Dune Huggies from Dean Davidson. I just love these, they're smaller, but there's something, I don't know, more special about them. I even like these Bone Her Huggies with the little crystal in the front. Um, and it's not the size that bothers me because I do have larger hoops that I really love. And in fact, I do want to mention these while we're at it, these Chanel pearl hoops. Now, these look like they would be heavier, but they're not. Like there's something really heavy about these Fendi hoops. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know why. Hold on, let me put on these Chanel ones so we can see if it pulls my earlobe. Yeah, these are heavy too, but I don't know. There's something about Maybe it's like the weight distribution. Anyway, I'm getting too into it, but I really love these Chanel pearl hoops. I think they're so much fun. I think they're really special looking. And I like that the CCs on here are just, just very dainty. And they're on the biggest pearl here. The rest of the pearls are smaller. And it's just, yeah, it's just such a pretty design. And I really like pearls. I really like hoops, obviously. Um, so these were a big winner. The Fendi's, I mean, I wouldn't say that this is like a terrible purchase, but I don't think, like if I lost these, I don't think I would run out and get another pair of these Fendi hoops. And then the last piece of jewelry I wanna mention is this Click Clack from Hermes. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I purchased this when I went to Morocco. So I went to Morocco, it was my friend's 50th birthday. We were traveling with one of her very good friends. So I purchased this one, I purchased uh, the thinner one. So what is that? It's just the click. Um, it's a thinner one, but it had a gold finish and it had um, like pink enamel with some print on it. And then I got like the orange enamel bangle for the friend that we were traveling with. So anyway, I gave my friend who was turning uh, 50, I gave her the choice of this one or the thinner one. Uh, with the gold finish and she went with the thinner one. So I love, I mean, I love the click clacks from Hermes. I always feel like I need to put one on to kind of finish my look and it definitely finishes my look. I have four of them now. So I have this topi one with like the palladium finish. I have a gold with black enamel. I have another palladium finish one with um, yellow enamel. This is just the click versions. It's, it's thinner as you can see. And then I have this one. And I love, love, love like this animal print on the H. 
and it has just so much meaning for me because now every time I look at this, I think of Morocco, I think of my best friend who just turned 50. So, oh my God, I just realized that I still had the protective sticker on here. Wow, that was really, wow, that was a really good sticker. It really didn't seem like anything was over it. Wow, all right, well, it's like, it's like new underneath there. And when it comes to handbags, I will admit that I, I love all of the handbags that I've purchased. So this is really not gonna be a best and worst. This is gonna be more of like a most worn, least worn situation. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about these randomly. Um, but this Dior mini saddlebag that I just got up my way back from Morocco, I got this in the London airport and um, I don't know if I can say it's most worn because it's relatively new, but it is loved. I love, love, love this little saddle. And, you know, I was on the fence. This is not a new design. I had hemmed and hawed about the, uh, the regular saddle size, whatever that is. I think it's just a medium. I don't think it's large. I think it's a medium. And I don't know, I always hesitated with the medium, but when I saw the small just sort of hanging up in the store, I was like, that's cute. <laughs> I really like that. And I like that the strap is adjustable. I can wear it crossbody um, if I want, but this particular handle, which is not removable, this it like lays right where this kind of hits my boobs. So it's a little awkward if I wear it um, crossbody. So I've tended to just wear it like in my hand or carrying it in my hand. Um, but I, do, I love this bag and I'm so, so glad that I got it. So that is the mini saddle, or is it the small saddle? Hold on, let me look at this tag. This is the saddle S, so small. So this is the small size, because I think they have, it's either a mini or a micro, which is even smaller than this one, but this is the small size. Another bag that is um, kind of, I don't know, it's kind of similar to this Dior in that it has like a top handle, it also has a strap, um, it has this kind of textured leather, much like this, where I don't feel like I have to worry too much about scratching it up. Um, and that's the Fendi Small Peekaboo. And I got the Solaria version, so it has this top stitching, which I thought kept it, um, I don't know, I guess like a little bit more casual, even though I feel like traditionally top stitching makes things a little bit more uh, formal looking. This actually, I think, keeps this very casual, maybe because it's like such a light colored stitching over this taupe, or maybe it's just the taupe color in general. Anyway, um, this bag, unlike, <laughs> unlike the Dior saddle, uh, fits a lot more than it looks. I don't know if it's because it has the two compartments in here. So I can fit like my wallet, my readers, uh, my sunglasses, my phone, my keys, like everything fits in here really, really well. It also gets a little bit wider at the bottom. I think that helps too. Um, whereas this bag, because of its odd shape, it really doesn't fit that much. It's also very structured. Um, so it really doesn't fit that much, but this Fendi Peekaboo is magical. It really fits a lot more than you think. And the sales associate at Fendi that I love working with, she's the one that suggested this because I kept looking or kind of just naturally gravitating towards like the medium or the large size because those bags look like the bag size that you would need if you wanted to carry like your phone and your keys and your sunglasses and your glasses, all the stuff. She was like, try the small, like try putting all that stuff into the small and it all fit. So I have to thank her for that. Um, so this was definitely well used, well loved. I even brought this to Cabo. This is a great travel bag because again, it's not that big but it fits a lot. And if you get one um, with this textured leather, you don't have to worry about it like scratching or anything. So yeah, this was like a really good purchase. The Chanel 22 is another one that I have zero regrets about. I love this bag. And when I got it, and probably for the few months afterwards, this was the only bag that I carried around. This color goes with basically my entire wardrobe. It's neutral, but it's not just, black, I have a lot of black bags. I loved this caramel color. I really fell in love with this color before I fell in love with the bag. And in fact, when the 22 first came out, I was not jazzed about it. I was like, okay. I think what bothered me the most was Chanel across here. I really wished, you know, if they have to put branding somewhere, I wish they had done their CCs there, like in a nice kind of like small way, maybe the size of this C, just a little boop, 
like right there. So I think this kind of turned me off in the beginning, but then I fell in love with this color and the essay had set it aside for me. And it's, it's just such an easy shape. It really is. I got the size small um, because the medium had the same length straps. So the bag actually came up higher and I like a lot of room, especially if I'm gonna be wearing a coat or whatever, or if I'm gonna be stuffing the bag. Um, I want a lot of room for my arms. So I thought the small was big enough and it really is. I mean, it fits enough. I don't know if it's big enough for like carry-on signs, but it is definitely, definitely big enough for like every day. It's, yeah, it's just such an easy bag to wear, to carry, to style. Like it really goes with a lot of things. It is definitely more on the casual side because of its kind of slouchy, big, kind of semi like hobo style to it. Um, but because it's Chanel and because it has these like chain straps, I really think you can dress it up too. And I got the small size. I think the larger the size, the more casual it looks. So anyway, this was another amazing, amazing purchase. I'm so glad I picked this up. I was even really debating whether or not I wanted to get this in black just to have, but I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay with, with this gold. Now, before I picked up the Chanel 22, the bag that I was carrying around nonstop was the Chanel Jumbo Flap Black Caviar. I purchased this used from Kat here on YouTube. She was doing um, a sale of some bags that she didn't use. And this one was much too large for her. She's been getting more into like the smaller size bags, the mini bags, things like that. She's also much more petite than I am. So I would imagine this bag probably swallowed her up a bit. Um, I'm not that petite. So this bag is perfect for me. I love the size of this bag. I had debated on getting the medium size. Anytime a medium flap came into store, my essay at Chanel would contact me, like if it was a neutral color. And I, there was just, there's something about the medium. I'm like, it's just a little bit too small because you have to like really organize the things in the medium bag if you want to fit everything, like your phone, your sunglasses, your wallet, like everything has to stand up perfectly. Otherwise it's not going to fit. And I don't like that. I want to just be able to throw something into my bag and go. And this jumbo definitely allows me to do it. So this is one of the double flaps. It has, you know, the deep Bordeaux interior and it's just great. Oh, and the other thing I like about the jumbo size is that when you kind of single up the strap, you can wear it crossbody. It's a little bit long. I don't really mind. I just like the option of having it crossbody. If it's too short, you're kind of shit out of luck. But if it's too long, you can just kind of suck it up. And this is a really nice length to put over your shoulder where it gives you enough room, like what I was talking about with the 22. Like you just, I don't know, I want enough room. I don't like bags, which I think are kind of in now, which were really in in the 90s. It's just this little petite little bag. And it's like, I'm like, I don't want an armpit bag. I don't want an armpit bag. There's too much going on there already, like I need the room. So this drop is a really nice amount of space. And I think this was the first pre-loved bag that I purchased. And I actually purchased another one this year as well, which we'll get to. But yeah, this is the very first pre-loved bag that I ever purchased and absolutely no regrets. I mean, I purchased it from someone that I know, someone that I trust and someone who takes like pristine care of their products. Look. Look at like the corners of this bag. I mean, absolutely incredible. So this is definitely one of my best purchases of 2022. Okay, let's move on to two bags that um, I love. I really do love these bags, but, and I, and I kind of knew this when I purchased them, um, but I don't use them. <laughs> I don't use them that much. I've used both of these bags once each, and they're both, Fendi bags, and I'm sure you guys can guess which ones they are, but I had to get them because they're like collector's pieces. So the first one is the Fendaci baguette. Now, when Fendi and Versace teamed up and created Fendaci, I was simultaneously like hysterical, like with laughter and with joy. Like I was just so excited for this collab because I just thought, oh my God, like two Italian houses that are like not that similar, but, but kind of at the same time, I don't know, like it just seemed to work, even though I think superficially they are very different houses, come from very different places, have very different voices. 
but look at what they did when they came together. It's just so incredible. I'm so glad that I got this. Look at the Versace pins on the side and just this gold. And yeah, I just, I love it so, so much. And I have zero regrets. I put the tissue paper back in here to keep its shape, but I, I never, I never wear it. And I know, you know, for some people, if you don't wear your handbags or your shoes or your clothes, it's a total waste of money. I don't think this was a waste of money because this is a collector's item for me, but I don't really wear it. Like I said, I think I've, well, maybe I've worn this twice. I think I've worn this twice, but I did get this last summer. I think I picked this up last August. So it's been a while, but I just, I don't know. I just don't have the occasion to wear a really gold Fendachi baguette. <laughs> Look at the dust bag, the Fendachi dust bag. It's <laughs> so good. And then the other bag is, you guessed it, the other Fendi baguette that I purchased. And this bag I've only worn once and I really actually need to put the tissue paper back in here to keep it shape. But this is to celebrate um, the baguette's anniversary. And I, again, absolutely no regrets. I love this bag. I love, love, love this color. I love the lining, let me show you. The lining is like a lilac purple. Like this bag just couldn't get better. It just couldn't get any better. It's so, the baguette, it's so Sex in the City, which is what put the baguette on the map in the first place. And I love it. I have only worn it once though, because this bag symbolizes a lifestyle that I do not have. <laughs> But I do love it. I did uh, go out on the town with my friend Matthew when he was in town, and I did wear this. I actually wore it with my Dries coat, the hot pink one. That's actually when I realized how hot that coat is. Um, but anyway, this is such a gorgeous bag, and I pre-ordered this. I saw it on Instagram. It was like maybe a picture of the Fendi runway show, and I contacted my uh, friend, my very good friend, who is a personal shopper at Saks in New York. And I was like, are you guys getting this bag? Because you need to set one aside for me. And he did, and he sent it over to me. But isn't it incredible? And I know this bag came in like that light pink. It also came in like the shade of the, um, the lining, like that lilac purple color. And I love them all, but I really, I'm glad I got the green. I think the green is a lot of fun. And then next, I picked up this flamenco, um, clutch from Loewe and I had been eyeing this bag for years. I mean years and they kept every year they kept coming out with more like variations on this theme where just this past season they had like a puffer version of this. They've now come out with more sizes. They have one, you know, ones with different materials or whatever and every season I was like maybe I want that one. So I just, I don't know, I just kind of froze every time I wanted to pick up one of these. But I finally settled on this color, which is like this really interesting like gold ochre color, which I love. I know it's sort of like baby puke color, but I really, really love it. And then they had this handle that you could buy separately, but you could attach it to the straps here and it makes it like a, like a handheld bag instead of just a clutch or it comes with a strap that you can put over your shoulder. Hold on, let me show you the strap. So here's the, the strap that you can wear crossbody or over your shoulder. Um, I love this top handle because it has this kind of braiding slash whip stitch detail with this duller ochre color and then this even brighter ochre color. I just love it. I love this bag. I love how soft this leather is. I love this drawstring detail on the side, which is so cool. Like it's just such a cool bag. Now, have I worn this bag? I have definitely worn this bag more than the Fendi bags, but I have not worn it as much as I thought I would. And I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the color. I don't know if it is simply the, the style. I don't know if it's because I've gotten really lucky and purchased all of these bags that I can wear every day and I love wearing every day and goes with everything else. So I don't know if this is just maybe fallen to the wayside, um, but I do love this bag. I just haven't worn it that much. I'm hoping this year things will change. Things will change for the flamenco. And you guys know how much I love Loewe and yeah, it's just, it's a special, it's a really special bag to me. I don't know why I haven't worn it as much as I would like. Oh, there's a bag that's actually back in my closet that I wanted to talk about. 
I probably forgot about it subconsciously. But it is this, oh, it's so dusty. But it is this Balenciaga Neo City, like extra large tote. I think this is actually a men's style. I bought it in store at the Balenciaga at Crystal's mall here in Vegas. It's so dusty because I have not felt right using it because of the incredibly bad call that Balenciaga made with, you know, what they chose to send on the runway and child abuse. And it was just, it's just bad. It's just bad. And I have not felt right carrying this bag. So this is definitely one of my worst purchases of 2022 because I think I've only used it once and then the scandal broke out and I was like, I, I'm not gonna be wearing that until they make things right. I don't know if that's just a matter of time. I don't know. I mean, you know, they've issued apologies. They've fired, I think, the people that were in charge or whatever, but it was really bad and I still feel uncomfortable carrying anything, kind of promoting that brand. So that's kind of a fail for me. But we're gonna head downstairs now because the last bag I wanna talk about is the bag that I am currently using. It is a bag that I've been using nonstop since I got it. But that is the Hermes Birkin 25 in Togo leather and the color is Gris Totorel. And I purchased this uh, pre-loved actually from a good friend of mine <laughs> in New York who is a very avid Hermes shopper and she purchased this and just didn't like it. I actually can't remember if she didn't like the size or the color or like the color combo, like the gris and the palladium or the gris palladium and the 25. Anyway, I should find out from her, but she just, yeah, she got it. She has a lot and <laughs> she was like, I, yeah, I never use it. And so I offered to buy it from her and she said, sure. So anyway, this is the bag that I have been carrying non-stop since I got it. And I've been very hesitant to go down the Birkin route again because, wait, what year are we in? Maybe 20 years ago? 20 years ago, uh, my husband purchased a Birkin 40 for me in black Clemence leather, I believe. And I wore that bag to death. It looks terrible. I'm embarrassed to show it to you guys. It's actually in the garage. And because it's a 40, I just used it when I worked at Corporate America. It was great. It fit everything that I needed. In New York, you definitely need a bigger bag than you do in like car culture or suburbia. But because it doesn't have a shoulder strap or anything, like I built muscles carrying that bag because not only is the bag heavy, it's a 40, it's very large, it's very heavy, but you shoved everything in there that you ever needed. So anyway, I used it pretty incessantly for a couple of years while I was working in corporate America. And then I started working for myself and I never needed to go to the office. I never needed such an impractical bag <laughs> when I was running errands. So I just stopped using it. And I just had this like, ugh, like I hate that Birkin. It's so big, it's so heavy. It looks like a briefcase because it's just so, it's black, it's structured. It's heavy, I'm gonna keep saying heavy. Um, and so I just had this like, ugh, like kind of disdain for Birkins. And then, you know, the small bag is in and everyone's been carrying the 25, maybe the 30. And so I've been seeing it more and more and more. And I was like, maybe I need the 25. So anyway, I gave it a shot and I'm so glad that I did. I mean, I'm gonna tell you, it is not always the best kind of bag to have without having a shoulder strap. Sometimes I'm carrying this bag and I'm like, like, I just want to put it on my shoulder. Like I actually have to like, like do this and do something with my hands or like stick it between my legs so that I can use both hands. And it's annoying. It hasn't stopped me from using it. Like I said, I've been using it non-stop since I got it. And I got it, when did I get this bag? I think at the end of November, end of November, beginning of December. I can't remember that whole time period is like such a blur. Anyway, um, I've been wearing it nonstop ever since. So for at least, at least like a month, probably closer to like a month and a half, I've been using this pretty much every single day. And it does carry everything that I need, including glasses, readers. <laughs> I'm old, okay? A wallet, car key, lip balm, eye drops. Wow, this has turned into a what's in my bag, hairband. So it fits all of that and it could fit more because it fits all of this comfortably. And like I was saying with the Chanel Jumbo, I can just throw stuff in here and it fits. Like I don't have to be careful with it and it all fits. So 
I love that bag. I really do. I, I really wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if the Birkin was going to win my heart, but at this, at this size and with my current lifestyle, it's perfect. So anyway, those are my best and worst, most worn, least worn purchases of 2022. There's a lot of other stuff on this list, but I don't think they were like the best or the worst. They were kind of just like in the middle. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you in my next vlog.